Please be seated if you're not already doing so. And could I invite those who are carrying gifts to come forward, please? Connor, Owen and Grace, and place them on the little uh, plinth here at the top of the sanctuary. We're just going to pause for a moment uh, as people find their seats. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of Our Lady of the Nativity, a place that Pat Dillon knew well at a time that Pat would have frequented coming to this church. He was here most Sundays over the last 40 years and beyond. We gather this morning to pray for his happy repose. Jacinta, our hearts go out to you. And our thoughts and prayers extend to Catherine, who's tuning in from Australia, to Grace Mary, Connor, and Owen. We hope that you have felt supported and enwrapped by the presence of many of friends and family who have gathered. We acknowledge Rosaline and Francis, Pat's surviving siblings, Helen and Mary, his sisters-in-law, Katie and Rebecca, his nieces, and Paddy, his nephew. We stand in solidarity with the Dillon family and the wide circle of friends who mourn Pat, each in their own unique way. Could I welcome especially Father David, a dear family friend of Jacinta and Pat's for many years. Special mention also to the members of Pat's old gang up there in the organ loft, Siobhan and the Fieldstown Church Choir, who are in their usual spots today for the Mass, several of whom will be honouring their friend and fellow choir member by singing today. To all those who couldn't, could not come into the church today during this time of restriction when we are only allowed 50 inside the church due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I know it adds to the already difficult moment that we face today. But we're doing all these things, keeping safe social distance, exercising hand hygiene, and sometimes even outside wearing masks to help curb the spread of this sometimes deadly disease. Thank you for thinking of others. For those unable to be with us today in person, uh, we have, of course, the webcam facility. Uh, we have our own system, churchservices.tv, but uh, we have Joe Finnegan broadcasting on YouTube. So if anybody is uh, uh, tuning in, you're very, very welcome. Um, particularly, of course, we think of Catherine. And uh, I know that she has sent a message, uh, which we will uh, come to at uh, the end of the uh, letter. Or do you want to do it now? You'd like to do it now? 
Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll take that message. So Catherine has sent a message via her sister Grace, who will read it now. My sister Catherine, the eldest in our family, who is in Australia and cannot be with us today, has written a few words and um, we would like, and she would like them to be read on her behalf. The death of a loved one is a time of pain and sadness but also of joy as the soul moves to its next stage of life. We are thankful for the life of my father had for the 81 years in this world. He lived a good life and saw and experienced many things during his time. He raised us four children with my mum and supported us in many ways over the years. There are many memories from childhood times through to later years and beyond that we cherish and will carry with us. In particular, his time with us as a family, his work with my granddad and the great bonds they had, and his community spirit and involvement in many activities and events. My father loved music and took great pride and pleasure in the music making that we took part in and which Grace and I continued with as the years unfolded. He was always ready to take us wherever we needed to go with our music lessons, rehearsals and concerts and for Connor and Owen, supported them greatly with their sports, training, and events over the years. We will miss his presence and many things about him, but his qualities and spirit live on through us, through our memories and the legacy he has left behind with the beautiful center at Drumshallon Forge. We are grateful for all the support and care that he and our family received, particularly in the last few months. All of your support and well wishes have been deeply appreciated, whether it has been in person, by phone, or through your prayers and well wishes. Thank you for being, thank you all for being here today and may his soul move in heaven with God and the angels. Thank you, Grace, uh, for reading those words from Catherine, and uh, I know that uh, that means so much. I mentioned uh, Joe Finnegan there, whose transmission of our funerals and other religious services have helped many families in difficult times. I forgot to mention Jane uh, Connor's uh, partner. You're very welcome uh, as well. And I'd like to highlight those who are tuning in from other parts of our island and beyond. Of course, Australia, as we've also already mentioned, but also the UK, the United States, and the Middle East to name but a few. And of course, locally, uh, neighbors and other friends, some of whom gathered along the road and as Pat's cortege moved past, and may, may, there may be some sitting outside, and uh, we have our outdoor, outdoor speaker on for those. Uh, many people have gathered to pay their respects, and as Grace mentioned there, thank you for your presence.
Pat is predeceased, as we heard there, by his beloved pop, Pat Sr., and his mother, Catherine Harty. His dear brother, Michael, who died just a couple of years ago. And we think of them today, and of course, all of the family deceased. Chatting with Jacinta and the family over these last days, it was quite clear that despite the sadness that they carry in their hearts, there is a desire to mark the happiness that Pat brought into their lives, to remember and treasure the better times, the laughter, his smile, his determined approach, and the moments, the special moments that we all know Pat would want us to to mem remember. To continue our Mass now, we began at the door of the church with the blessing of Pat's beautiful coffin, unusual but absolutely beautiful, Father David said, very typically Pat. I'd like to highlight the personal mementos that uh, the children brought forward uh, this morning. Connor brought the anvil and candlestick. The anvil represents the long line of blacksmiths that the Dillon family had, going back in family folklore to the Battle of Clontarf, Brian Baru in 1094. Now, probably Pop, Pat's dad, was the last of the, the full blacksmiths as such. I don't know, Jacinta didn't know whether Pat actually shod a horse in his uh, life, but of course he did have some great skill and craftsmanship with metal, which, of which the candlestick is a, is a fine example. We have also there a family photograph represents Pat, representing Pat's dedication to his family. You all know what, it, what that meant to each of you. We are grateful today for these memories, and may those memories be a blessing for you. I've already mentioned uh, his involvement with the choir, and we have a choir, his choir book here today. Uh, he was a dedicated, faithful member of the choir for over 40 years. And there's also a book there about drama. Pat was a, a great man for the drama, the amateur dramatics. A book written by local Ricky Gerard about amateur dramatics in Drogheda and the surrounds, has a few pages about the Monaster Boys group. And Pat, uh, as I mentioned, was a committed member, not without wit and skill, of course, and accomplishment. He enjoyed also what he did, first through Macron Afferma, but also uh, then through the drama group here in Monaster Boys. Uh, to people of the Netflix generation, it doesn't make much sense um, to have an amateur dramatic group. But our town too at home had a strong group. And I remember the camaraderie, the crack and the achievements of those groups bringing drama to the towns and villages of the uh, country back in the day. My friends, we gather today uh, in sadness, as, as I've already mentioned, to ag acknowledge and recognize Pat's special gifts and talents. I think we can all agree he used them well. But all of us are given talents by God. So as we pray for Pat during this Mass, we will also pray that his example will inspire us to use well the gifts that God has given each of us. Let us stand. Lord, you are the vine, we are the branches. Ahirna Jenthrokra. Separated from you, our lives become barren. Akrist Jenthrokra. United with you, our lives bear much fruit. Ahirna Jenthrokra. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And uh, as today is our Sunday and Sunday Mass, 
we're invited to recite together the words of the Gloria, which is the great hymn of praise to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament you have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves, and indeed we pray that Pat has experienced and will, the fruits of your redemption. For you live and reign forever and ever in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now again. Thank you. So our liturgy of the word is coming forward now. Today, as it is a Sunday, we're bound to the mass of the day because it is the Sunday liturgy. And today is the feast of Corpus Christi, or the body and blood of Christ. So uh, uh, Kitty, who is uh, Pat's niece, is going to lead us in our first reading. And Sam, and following uh, Katie's reading, Grace will come forward to lead us in our second reading. Just remain there. The first reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you. Moses went and told the people all the commands of the Lord and all the ordinances. In answer, all the people said with one voice, we will observe all the commands that the Lord has decreed. Moses put all the commands of the Lord into writing, and early next morning he built an altar at the foot of the mountain with 12 standing stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he directed certain young Israelites to offer holocausts and to immolate bullocks to the Lord as communion sacrifices. Half of the blood Moses took up and put into basins, the other half he cast on the altar. And taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it to the listening people. And they said, we will observe all that the Lord has decreed, we will obey. Then Moses took the blood and cast it towards the people. This, he said, is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, containing all these rules. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The cup of salvation, salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. name. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup, the cup of, of salvation, salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. Second reading. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The blood of Christ can purify our inner self from dead actions. Now Christ has come as the high priest of all the blessings which were to come. He has passed through the greater, the more perfect tent, which is better than the one made by men's hands because it is not of this created order. And he has entered the sanctuary once and for all, taking with him not the blood of goats and bull calves, but his own blood, having won an eternal redemption for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer are sprinkled on those who have incurred defilement and they restore the holiness of their outward lives. How much more effectively the blood of Christ, who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice to God through the eternal spirit, can purify our inner self from dead actions so that we do our service to the living God. He brings a new covenant as the mediator, only so that the people who were called to an eternal inheritance may actually receive what was promised. His death took place to cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to bring our gospel. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel as found in Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when the Paschal Lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go? and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover meal. So he sent two of them, and he said to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitch of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is the dining room in which I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations there. And so the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything just as he had told them, and prepared the Passover meal. And as they were eating, he took some bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. Take it, he said, this is my body. And then he took a cup with wine And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which will be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine 
until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. And after singing psalms, they left for the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I can't think of a better day to celebrate Pat Dillon's funeral mass as a committed believer, a faithful Catholic, a dedicated parishioner. Pat would be so pleased to be led to rest on the feast of Corpus Christi, Latin for the body and blood of Christ. It comes from the theological understanding of what the Holy Eucharist is. For Pat and many of his generation, the penny catechism tells us the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, together with his soul and divinity under the appearances of bread and wine. Even for people of faith, this mystery is very challenging. And for those who do not believe, they just don't understand how Catholics can see Jesus really present in the bread and wine at Mass. The Catholic Church teaches us the real presence of Jesus in the sacrament and calls the Mass the source and summit of our salvation. As we heard in today's readings, the Mass brings us back to that first Mass, the Gospel that we heard from Father David. Firstly, we heard from the book of Exodus, the first offerings of Moses. And then from the book of Hebrews, St. Paul telling the people that the offering that Moses made was surpassed by the sacrifice of Christ himself. There will never be another sacrifice needed. And at the Last Supper, Jesus said to his disciples, do this in memory of me. And that's what we do every Sunday when we come to church. Indeed, every day in Mass, we unite ourselves with all those who have gone before us and who live in the presence of God. For when we celebrate the Eucharist at this altar, we unite ourselves to the altar in heaven through the priestly ministry and sacrifice of Jesus Christ himself. If only we could see with those eyes of faith. We could see that here, at this moment, there is a mystical time when the host is raised here, the sacrifice on Calvary is represented, and we can avail of the blessings and the salvation won through the death and resurrection of Jesus. The Catechism tells us to accomplish so great a work, his work of salvation, Christ is always present in the church, especially in her liturgical celebrations. He is present in the sacrifice of the Mass, not only in the person of the minister, but especially in the Eucharistic species. He is present in his word, since it is he himself who speaks when the Holy Scriptures are read in church. And lastly, he is present when the church prays and sings. For he has promised, where two or three gather in my name, I am there in the midst of them. How many masses did Pat Dillon attend and pray and sing in and at 
here and in other places? How many Easter vigils, Christmas mornings, midnight masses? It's a phenomenal thought to think that just as Pat was here, well, rather up there, all those times, he is now equally present, but in a mystical way. United with us now, united with you now, through the mystery of the Eucharist. Yes, I think Pat would be smiling to think that his funeral mass was being offered on the feast of Corpus Christi. But we can't spend all our time at mass. <laughs> However, the mass is meant to be a way to nourish the life of the believer outside of church. A Eucharistic spirituality is the true antidote to the individualism and selfishness that so often characterizes life today. If we really believe in the Eucharist, we will rediscover certain things. And I think some of these are very pertinent to Pat we will rediscover a sense of gratitude. Pat, for me, was a man who was always deeply aware of the blessings he had and grateful for them. If we are really connected to the Eucharist and know Jesus through the Eucharist, we will also come to be aware of the centrality of relationships we are not meant to be on our own. And of course, it starts with the family, but also extends into friends. What's often said, the family we choose for ourselves. Relationships are key. Jesus wants us to be in communion with one another. And particularly then to seek out and find those who are broken in life and to bring them healing. I think Pat was someone who had that kind of approach to life. Eucharistic spirituality also gives us an ability to restore the dignity of the human person, particularly when it comes to their work. And Pat, again, I think that echoes with his life. He was always very polite and, uh, you know, respectful, I, chatty and friendly, never passed without a word. And his own life, he applied himself. He wanted to do his best for himself and his family. And of course, the family history was so important. Eucharistic Spirituality also helps us to become aware that we are only human. We do have faults and failings, but they never overshadow the value of the person. Everybody matters. Everybody. And I think that Pat had these three qualities. Closeness, hospitality, and help. Pat was a good friend to many. He was always welcoming, and he never would have hesitated to help if he could. I started to know Pat Dillon when I was first in Drogheda 25 years ago. Perhaps, and I was talking to Jacinta about this, perhaps through the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, but certainly through Green Hills when uh, Grace was there. I was connected with Green Hills as a chaplain. But also through, and I was thinking about this last night, through historical and cultural events in Drogheda. There's always something on, and Pat was usually at it. And then since coming here as part of the parish, Pat was, if you excuse this phrase, one of the old cohort who have seen us through worse times than COVID, he always struck me as someone who was kind and gentle. But I also knew him to be 
dogged and determined. He enjoyed interactions, as I say, and I got the impression that he always, he often got lost in moments of being involved, if you know what that means. <laughs> he kind of got lost by being there. He gave a lot to his family and the locality and was well known and liked. A supporter constantly of our community and in the events promoting our community. As we've already mentioned in the gifts, uh, he will be forever remembered as a member of our choir. And of course, Grace, through Catherine, mentioned the forge, which will always be part of our community. A credit to Pat and indeed all who were involved. To Jacinta and the children, everyone here is heartbroken for you. We share your grief and we want to support you in your journey. We can't journey for you. You have to find your own way. And we can't sum up your dad's life, Pat's life, in just these few minutes. But I think that the few words that Catherine shared through you, Grace, and the words that Connor will offer us towards the end, and I'm sure Father David will have something to say in the graveyard, and maybe others will contribute. There are many stories and yarns that have been told about Pat Dillon these last days. These highlights make Pat the man that he was and make all who have gathered here today feel his loss so much more sharply. I hope these memories will all be blessings for you. Just before I conclude, the children have lost a dad, yes, but Jacinta has lost not only a spouse and a life partner, but someone that she cared for and cared in a very practical way for very well. So many people have remarked on the love and the care that you give to Pat Jacinta, especially in more recent years when things became a little bit more challenging and the complications of life and health added extra burdens. You'll probably never forgive me for saying it, but Jacinta, you were amazing for Pat. I think it needs to be said. So grieve for him, mourn him, miss him, love him. But do all of that by living for him. Knowing that in faith, one day you will meet him again. Pat Dillon will never be forgotten here, that's for sure. And I know that many will pray with me today on this Corpus Christi. Eternal rest grant on to Pat, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. My friends, again, as it is a Sunday, we're invited to profess our faith. So could I invite you all, please, to stand and pray together the Apostles' Creed with me this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we'll come to our prayers of the faithful. Owen will go first, followed by Grace then Helen, and finally Rosaline from her seat, will lead a prayer. 
My friends, God wants us to use the gifts that he has given us so that we may live full lives here and enjoy eternal life hereafter. <clears throat> My dad, Pat, was a man of unwavering faith. May he now hear these words. Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord, hear us. We ask God's blessing on the many nurses, doctors, and carers who ministered to Dad during his lifetime, especially in the difficult recent months. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all those who prayed for Pat during these difficult months. We ask God's protection and blessing that they may be rewarded for their steadfast loyalty. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rosaline, the youngest in the family, the daughter in the family. And I feel very privileged to be here. It's a great joy to be here despite the sadness, to be here with the family, the neighbours, the friends, and so many good people. So we're, I'm remembering all our dead loved ones. Pat, of course, especially we remember him. Michael, who died just two years ago, and Mary, his wife, who died several years prior to that, and our own beloved Tony. May they rest in peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, Rosaline. And uh, we conclude our prayers just with a quiet moment of reflection for personal prayer. And as Rosaline has prayed for her family deceased, we also remember all of those on the parish list of the dead, the deceased benefactors of the parish, and all who have died recently, including, of course, Pat Dillon, Mary Sharkey, Nemal Holland of Toher, Paul McKeag of Dundalk, Phyllis Ita Mead of Whitehall in Dublin, originally Dunlear, Karen Megan, Chairman Feckin, and Mary Kinsella of Skerries. And if anyone in the parish has a family member outside the parish who has died, do, of course, let us know. And, uh, of course, today's Mass has been offered for Pat Dillon. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, to let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Please be seated now as we offer our gifts. Siobhan and the choir will lead us in music and song.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may delight like our brother Pat for all eternity in that share of your divine life which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. For you live and reign forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his disciples, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so, as we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, may we pass over to the heavenly realities that are foreshadowed here. For as we eat his flesh that is sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. Therefore, with all creatures of heaven and earth, we sing a new song of adoration. And with all the hosts of angels, we cry out without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this morning the memorial of the passion and saving passion of your Son and his wondrous resurrection, his ascension in, into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, on the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with Mary, the most blessed virgin, mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Bishop, his assistant Michael, and all those who lead and serve your people. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Pat Dillon, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed sisters and brothers and those who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in the Lord, let us stand and pray together the words that our Saviour gave us as the pattern of all prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. If we live in the same household, of course we can offer a sign of peace to those who don't and are around us. Give a gesture to those around, please. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel again for this part of the Mass. If you can't kneel or don't have a kneeler, please remain seated. Sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Uh, just a little word about the distribution of Holy Communion. Obviously, under the circumstances, uh, we have to have protocols 
for all of the distribution. Father David will remain at the front here and will take first of all the uh, immediate family on either side. And then just if you follow stewards' examples, one of our stewards will assist. We'll just keep our distances as we're going uh, for communion and so on. I'll be going first of all to the uh, organ loft for communion to the choir members. And then I'll be available at the back of the church, again under the direction of the stewards. Obviously, when we're taking off our masks to receive communion, um, we'll be putting them back on again, but our stewards will be coming around then after communion with uh, the uh, antiseptic gel. So you can uh, sanitize your hands again after touching your mask if you don't have any gel with you. So let's, we'll just take it nice and gently. And of course, during this time, Siobhan and the choir will help us to pray and praise God uh, through music and song.
Please stand. O Lord, grant that we may delight, as your servant Pat may also delight, for all eternity in the share of divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated once again. Thank you. Just before uh, Connor speaks, he's going to uh, say a few words on behalf of himself and the family, of course. Um, I'd like to just acknowledge and thank all of those who prepared for and participated in our liturgy today, uh, particularly, of course, Siobhan and Ethna and the Fieldstown Church Choir, which have added so beautifully to our liturgy for Pat. And uh, I know he would be smiling uh, on all the choice of music and singing today. So thank you so much. To Teresa, our sacristan, uh, to Dennis, uh, who looked after the car parking, to Ollie and Claire, our stewards, uh, who are doing such a great job. Thank you so much, keeping us all right and safe. Uh, and through the Parish Pastoral Council, uh, all of our parishioners, of course, uh, extend sympathies and prayers to Jacinta and the children, and indeed the wider family circle at this time. We we'll thank Connor's undertakers as well, and of course Joe Finnegan for helping us to join uh, with Catherine in uh, Australia and many others who are joining with us through the web. And for those who have travelled to be here, particularly Father David, thank you for your presence, and indeed all who are gathered outside and who have uh, acknowledged Pat's passing in these days, thank you for your constant support in prayer today and in the days ahead. Gurumila Mayogov and Connor, if you'd like to come forward and speak. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, just going to say a few words here. Um, although my father <clears throat> rarely broke God's laws, you might be find it funny that he occasionally broke man's laws in the 60s and 70s. Um, although you might have been stuck behind him, coming out the road, crawling, uh, he wasn't a very fast driver, you'd be surprised to know that he actually was in a car crash once. Um, a very good friend of his and himself were driving down Shop Street when a car shot out in front of them and they dented the back. And my father was quick to pull his friend out of the seat and jump in himself because he, he was insured, but his friend wasn't. <laughs> um, I didn't know until a couple of years ago, but I believe he <laughs> was involved in the butter smuggling <laughs> in the late, uh, late, late 60s <laughs> when the price was crazy down here, but cheap up the north. And also, I believe the customs were after him in the 70s for the red diesel. <laughs> um, yeah, my father was an amazing man, and he taught me a lot. Um, I find myself doing a lot of the stuff that would have embarrassed me as a child. I start to see him doing now. I suppose I never understood why he used to beep going through crossroads. Um, I do now because I've seen someone drive straight through a crossroad in front of me. Um, he was very fond of animals. He would be rescuing hedgehogs and kittens and everything off the roads, foxes, you name it. Um, he was always a busy man, but he never rushed. And I rush a lot, so I need to slow down a bit, but I think stay busy, but take your time with everything and stay safe. I think that's why he would have wanted a message. Don't rush, take your time. Um, I want to thank Father David, Father Rush, um, for the lovely Mass, um, Connors and the Lear. Everyone has helped over the last few days. And um, yeah, keep the stories going. Thank you. God bless.
Mike Hugh, Connor, your own middle market, and uh, your dad would be very proud, not only of yourself, but all of you. Um, I, from what I remember, whenever you were much younger, I say I knew him in Drada, and uh, he was always proud of his children, always. And uh, he spoke very highly. I didn't know Jacinta at that time, but uh, I would have known your dad a lot around the town in Drada. And uh, he was very, always very, uh, as Catherine pointed out through Grace's words, he was always bringing you somewhere or waiting for you or bringing you to music or bits and pieces. And, and that was the great duties of a, of a parent, which is always lovely. So my friends, we've come to the end of the funeral mass. We're going to finish now with the blessing of the mass and then the um, uh, final commendation prayers. For those who are here as their Sunday mass, could I, I encourage you to take a copy of our bulletin home? Could I highlight the celebrations that are happening in the week ahead? We have, uh, and had Pat been alive, I'm sure he'd have been very involved, St. Colum Kill, 1,500 years uh, since his birth this year. So Colm Kill was born in 521. And of course, there's a Colm Kill's church in Toher. And we are part of the St. Colm Kill's pastoral area. Colm Kill went off to a place called Iona uh, to found a monastery there. And it's still a center of Christian life. And uh, Colm Kill, very a profound uh, saint in the Irish uh, history. But we have a link with Buiha, or St. Boyce of Monaster Boyce. He also passed away 1,500 years ago this year in 521. And before he died, he foretold the birth of Colum Kill. So there's a lovely link. Maria Callery would know the, the details of all of that. Uh, and uh, there's a lovely connection. So we're having a Mass in the pastoral area on Wednesday night, uh, and we'd love you to get along to s connect with Column Kill and with the history of our pastoral area. And then on Tuesday night, we're having the bishop here with us in Tenure to celebrate uh, the lead-up to that. So the lead-up to the Wednesday celebrations of Column Kill starts today in Termin Fecken. There's a, a, a time of prayer at 3 o'clock today in Termin Fecken, leading on to Clotterhead on Monday and then our Mass on Tuesday evening. All of the details are in the bulletin. I would encourage you to take a copy uh, with you. And uh, finally, could I say thank you on behalf of the parish for all the support that the parish receives from parishioners. And again, there's some details about your recent contributions to the parish. And we thank you so much for all that you do for us. So let us uh, now bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. And may Almighty God bless all who are gathered here on this Pat's funeral day. We pray, of course, in the spirit of the Corpus Christi that uh, Pat will join the divine liturgy in heaven. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our, of our brother Pat. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So now we honour Pat's coffin with a sprinkling of holy water as a reminder of baptism and with the use of incense as a reminder of the dignity of the body.
Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to greet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother Pat in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings Pat had in this life. They are signs of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and our brother Pat forever. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. The choir will lead us in our final hymn and in just a moment I'll invite you to stand as, not just yet, but in a moment, I invite you to stand as we take Pat to his place of rest.
we've We've come to give honor to one of nature's gentlemen, a great human being. We are here to give him honor. He was a friend, no ordinary friend. He was a good friend of mine and of all of you, I'm sure, and of many others, countless others, that just couldn't be here this day. He was neighbor too, no ordinary neighbor. He was a good neighbor. I became, oh, it's many, many years ago, and I came to know him like Nathaniel in the Gospel, a man who was goodness to the very core. He was friend and neighbor. He was, for Jess, he was her Anamkara. And for Catherine and Grace and Connor and Owen, he was their dad. He was a brother, too. He was so much to so many people. He was special in so many ways. And now he's at peace. He's at deep peace in that place where there is no talk of politicians or politics. We pray and celebrate his life and we hand him over to what lies beyond the threshold which he has already crossed. And we pray, may the angels lead you into paradise and the holy ones come to welcome you and bring you to your place at God's table, the table of the feast in paradise. We pray ancient words taken from the Hindu tradition. It says, there is a spirit that is mind and life, light and truth, and vast spaces. He contains all works and all desires and all perfumes, and all tastes. He enfolds the whole universe, and in silence is loving to all. To him I shall come when I go beyond this life, and to him will come the one who has faith and does not doubt. That's the prayer taken from the Hindu tradition, from the Chandoya Upanishad. We take words now from the poet Khalil Gibran. In the depths of your hopes and desires, lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, 
your heart dreams of the spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. For what is it to die but to free the breath from its restless tides, that it might rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountaintop, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. The words of the poet Khalil Gibran. We bless his body and this his resting place with water. The water is a reminder of the waters of baptism. As a tiny infant, he was baptized. And on that day, he was reassured of the promise. The promise that one day he would see God face to face. We now bless his body with this water to remind us that for Pat, that promise is already fulfilled. from Paul's letter to the Christians at Corinth. The trumpet will sound, and we shall all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, the dead will rise immortal, and we shall be changed. What is perishable in us must be clothed with what is imperishable. And what is mortal in us must be clothed with immortality. God himself has shaped us for this very end. And as a pledge of it, he has given us his spirit. In keeping with the tradition that goes back, we now say a decade of the Rosary, the Resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. May the angels lead you into paradise, and the martyrs come to welcome you, and bring you to your place at the table of the heavenly feast. A prayer of blessing for ourselves. The words of John O'Donoghue. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, on that day, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you on that day. May a flock of colors, indigo, red, green, and azure blue, come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the cork of thought, and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you on that day. 
May there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light and insight be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. And may the protection of the holy ones be yours. And so, may a slow wind work these words of comfort around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. So be it. Amen. We make a final prayer. They are the words of John Henry Newman. Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. And the fever of life is over and our work done. Then, give us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. A yeshde gorev a anon hilish. So be it. Amen. Thank you.
old friend. I speak your haunting name. You don't appear to answer. It's like the time we shared a stage. I spoke. You were the dancer. We seemed to complement a style and hit off against each other. You organized and I spoke the words. But now you're with your mother. Your body lies alone in strife. It's fixed in how it now resides. You remember how you move in life and consider as besides. Have you really left us alone? Or do you share our pain? We can miss your jovial smile. But do we also gain? Alone you lie for us to see. Your body has a message. We appear so distant as you lie alone, involved with your lonely passage. But do you share what we now go through <coughs> as we look upon your face? We see withdrawn features which have sunk to bone while you continue on your race. God bless. Um, please, we now hear a song by Pat's daughter, Catherine. And this is in spirit all the way from Australia. Um, and it's a song that she recorded specially and composed. The, the Soul's Prayer, Catherine Dillon. <laughs>
sonship here on earth. Your sonship here on earth. Your sonship here on Just to finish, I know that Pat had a great love of um, classical music and I'm going to play as a tribute to uh, my piece By a River, which is written about Boyne and it's a piece that Pat liked and he came to various concerts I did in Drogheda down. So I'm going to play this short piece and I'm sure you'd all, uh, Jacinta would like me to say a, a great thank you to everybody who helped the organisation of the funeral. Um, I'm sure that um, all the people who took part in the service in the church, um, the priests, uh, Siobhan and, uh, you know, uh, Edna, all the people who played. And I think especially uh, Father David for a beautiful um, service. I'm sure Jacinta would want to thank Father David for a beautiful uh, service today. And I'd um, like to thank uh, Ron for the poem and Brefney on the guitar. Brefney played, he Brefney played a beautiful song called The Day Thou Gave Us Lord Has Ended. That was the name of that piece. We don't have a leaflet. Uh, and I'm just going to finish with By a River. And um, God bless and Gold Peace Davis going to say a few words. Just thank you all for coming, and um, any of my uh, dad's family and friends is uh, welcome to my mother's house, and then uh, anyone from the gym or anything like that, just come down to my house. Thanks very much. Say I'm myself and my family. I'd like to thank um, my very good friend Brethney, uh, who I've known for many, many years now, um, and uh, his father Michael for. Um,
playing the music here today. I, I think it was a very fitting um, tribute to my dad, and he would be very, very happy. And he, yeah, he would have thought the music was beautiful. And uh, I, I'm grateful for the weather too that we we can spare the rain. So um, thank you all very much. Let us go in peace.